Dear students, now we are going to discuss RC circuits in detail. There are two types of RC wave shaping circuits available. One is high pass RC circuit that is also known as differentiating circuit. The next one is low pass RC circuit that is also known as integrating circuit. These circuits are widely used in multi vibrators as triggering and synchronizing pulse circuits. Let's discuss each type in detail here. RC differentiating circuit, it consists of a series capacitor and a shunt resistor. This circuit can perform the function of high pass filter. Okay, so in this one, the capacitive reactance X is equal to 1 by 2 pi Fc. From this, the capacitive reactance is always inversely proportional to this frequency. If frequency increases, the capacitive reactance decreases. At high frequency range, the capacitance value is very low. Correct? At high frequency, the capacitive reactance is very low. Then the capacitor can act as a short circuit. If it is a short circuit, we can get the output which is equal to the input. So all the high frequency components are available at the output side. Hence the circuit can act as a high pass filter. Do you all understand this concept? Here the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to frequency. At high frequency, this capacitor acts as a short circuit to provide all the high frequency components at this output side. At low frequency, it can act as an open circuit. There is no output. Do you all understand this concept? Next, we are going to discuss how this high pass RC circuit acts as a differentiator. So, this is the definition. If the high pass RC circuit has a very low time constant compared to the time period of the input signal, then the circuit is called as differentiator. Do you all understand this one? For differentiator, the time constant is very low. So in this case, the voltage drop across the resistor will be very small compared to the voltage drop across the capacitor. Therefore, the total input voltage appears across the capacitor. We have to simply ignore this VR value, okay, because it is very small, okay. Then we can get is equal to simply the input voltage V i of t. Next we are going to analyze the circuit. For that we can consider the current flowing through the capacitor. In general, the current flowing through the capacitor I of t is equal to what? C into dV i of t by dt. Okay. Then the output voltage is according to Ohm's law V is equal to I into R. So here I of t is replaced with the value C into dV I of t by dt. Then we can get the output voltage V naught of t is equal to Rc into dV I of t by dt. So here the output voltage is proportional to the derivative of the input voltage. That is known as differentiator. Do you all understand this concept? Next we are going to find out the transfer function. What is mean by transfer function? It is the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output voltage to the Laplace transform of the input voltage. Okay. Next we are going to find out the Laplace transform of the output voltage and the input voltage. For that we can apply KVL to this differentiator circuit. So here VI of T is equal to what? Voltage drop across this capacitance plus the voltage drop across this resistance. So VC of T plus v r of t so as we know that the capacity voltage is equal to what 1 by c integration of i of t into dt plus the voltage drop across the resistance is equal to i of t into r correct then we have to apply laplace transform on both the sides we can get the value as v i of s is equal to 1 by c Laplace transform of integration of I of t into dt is equal to what? That is I of s by s. Correct? So we can take this value as such. So 1 by c I of s by s plus r into I of t becomes I of s. Here I of s is a common term. We can take it outside. Then we can get the value as I of s into r plus 1 by sc. 
okay so consider this as the first equation so next we are going to find out the output voltage so here output voltage v naught of t is equal to i of t into r okay so here we are going to apply laplace transform on both the sides then we can get v naught of s is equal to r into i of s consider this as the second equation so next we are going to substitute this first equation in this one so here from this first equation what is the value of i of s i of s is equal to v i of s divided by r plus 1 by s c correct so we have to substitute this value here so v naught of s is equal to r into i of s is replaced with the value v i of s by r plus 1 by s c for further simplification we can take this r as a common term from the denominator so here r and r cancel and then we can get the value as vi of s divided by 1 plus 1 by s into rc because we have taken this r as a common term correct so this denominator becomes like this 1 plus 1 by s into rc then we have to take this as a common one then we can get the value as vi of s by 1 plus s into rc divided by src then we can move this value to this numerator do you all understand this one so v naught of s is equal to v i of s s into rc divided by 1 plus s rc we have to move this v i of s to this side then we can get v naught of s by v i of s is equal to s rc divided by 1 plus s into rc so v naught of s by v i of s is nothing but the transfer function of the differentiator h of s okay so this is the transfer function of the high pass filter in terms of frequency response this can be written as h of f is equal to 1 by 1 minus j into f1 by f where f1 is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc okay next one is the response of the differentiator to a pulse input signal here we can consider the input signal as a pulse with the duration tp okay so here the output is a spike signal it depends on the time constant rc pulse input signal vi of t is equal to the amplitude v for the duration 0 to tp okay otherwise its value is 0 here the output is equal to v into e power minus tp by rc so it is the derivative of this input signal this output signal depends on the time constant so the effect of time constant on the output waveform is given here if this time constant is far greater than 1 then we can get the output like this if the time constant is reducing then the width of this output is getting narrower that's what given here okay so finally if it is very low if the time constant is for less than 1 then we can get the output as a spike signal spike means what this is looks like a spike signal do you all understand this concept so by reducing the time constant the output pulse signal becomes narrower if the time constant is reduced significantly then the output will be a series of alternate positive and negative spikes so this response is common for square wave input also okay next one is rc integrating circuit that is also known as low pass rc circuit it consists of a series resistor and a shunt capacitor so we are going to give the input to the series resistor and we are going to take the output across this capacitor this circuit can perform the operation of low pass filter as we all know that the capacitive reactance x is equal to 1 by 2 pi fc from this the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to the frequency so at low frequency this xc becomes infinite therefore the capacitor acts as an open circuit so at low frequency this capacitor acts as an open circuit that means the output voltage is equal to input voltage so it can pass the low frequency components as such there is no attenuation at a very high frequency ranges this capacitive reactance becomes zero that means the capacitor acts as a short circuit if the capacitor is a short circuit then the output is equal to very low almost zero so it blocks 
the high frequency components. So it can act as a low pass filter. The circuit passes the low frequency components of the input signal and attenuates high frequency signals. Then it is called as low pass filter. The definition of integrator is given here. If the low pass RC circuit has a very large time constant compared to the time period of the input signal, then the circuit is called as integrator. Do you all understand this point? If the low pass RC circuit has a very large time constant, then it is called as integrator. Let's analyze this concept. In low pass RC circuit, the voltage drop across the capacitor is very small when compared with the voltage drop across the resistor because the resistor is seriously connected with the input side. Here the current through the resistor is equal to Vi of T by R. Then the output voltage across the capacitor can be obtained like this V0 of T is equal to voltage drop across the capacitor Vc of T. So here Vc of T is equal to 1 by C integration of I of T into dt. So here we have to substitute the value of this I of T. What is the value of I of T? V I of T by R. So we can get the output voltage is equal to V naught of T is equal to 1 by R C integration of V I of T into dt. So here the output voltage is proportional to the integral of this input voltage. Hence it can act as an integrator circuit. So in terms of frequency, the transfer function can be represented like this. H of F is equal to 1 by 1 plus J F by F2 where this F2 is equal to 1 by 2 pi RC. So next the response of RC integrator to a pulse input signal. Here we can consider the pulse input signal for the duration Tp. Okay, then we can get the output as a triangular signal. Here the output V0 of T is equal to Vp that is the peak voltage of this output into E power minus T minus Tp by RC. So here this output signal is based on this time constant value. Okay, so next one is response of RC integrator to a square input signal. For this square waveform as input signal based on this time constant we can get the triangular output for the large value of the time constant the output waveform is like a triangular waveform but for a small time constant the output resembles the input signal with a curve shape okay finally we can compare this rc differentiator and rc integrator rc differentiator consists of a series capacitor and a shunt resistor RC integrator consists of series resistor and shunt capacitor. Here it can act as a high pass filter. The integrator can act as a low pass filter. Differentiator has a very small time constant when compared to the period of the input signal. It has a very large time constant. The output voltage is the derivative of the input voltage. That is the differentiator circuit. In integrator, the output voltage is the integration of the input voltage. For the square input signal, for this differentiator, the output is a spike signal with a very low time constant. For the square wave input signal, the integrated output is a triangular signal for very large time constant. And here, the frequency response is 1 by 1 minus j f1 by f. Here it is 1 by 1 plus j f by f2. Okay.